Ondernemers. Uh, iedere dinsdagavond zenden we uit vanuit de waag in Amsterdam. Toen nieuw, Mark, ja, ik ben een beetje, uh, wat ik nu zit daar naar zo'n scherm te kijken. En ik zit altijd te wachten tot we onszelf daar goed in beeld zien. En dat duurde eventjes. Dus ja, vandaar dat ik een beetje zat te rommelen. Je bent eigenlijk op zoek naar jezelf. Ik ben best op zoek naar mezelf. <laughs> dat, is misschien het, uh, <laughs> dat zal ik de rest van de avond blijven, overigens. Ja. Uh, te gast is uh, deze avond Paul O'Connell. Paul is van het Uprise Festival en van Dutch Startup Jobs. Uh, Paul, uh, let's start with the festival. What is the festival? What do you do? I walk around the festival and uh, make sure that uh, nobody talks to me. Um, but uh, actually, the the festival is uh, I, I run it. Oh, I, I'm supposed to run it. That's apparently my job or zoo master. Well, it, it, it was your idea. Yeah. The Uprise Festival. First, explain to the people who don't know it. What Upri is the festival about? Uprise Festival is about helping young companies grow. Uh, at, the, at the heart of it, that's what it's about. Um, I started it in March last year. I started a prototype, an eight-hour prototype for 25 grand. Um, and we got about 4,000 people in attendance, which is no mean feat in, a, in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. um, but it, we focused, it was kind of an, a reaction against the large conferences uh, where I found that uh, as a young company, Where was your value? What did you want to get out of it? And living in the Netherlands for seven years now, you learn uh, cost-benefit analysis on everything. Uh, so uh, I wanted to create something for young companies. Having created Dutch startup jobs two and a half years ago, we had a great network, and I wanted to build this for uh, the companies uh, that wanted to grow fast and wanted uh, to buy, sell, recruit and find uh, other companies that they could either collaborate with or enterprise level um, uh, institutions where they can actually uh, grow faster. Mm, but, but there are plenty of festivals in Amsterdam. I think you can go to there, a festival every week. There and, is. And, and if, you, if you don't do something for startups, uh, you're not, you don't belong to the, 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 the inner circle anymore. So, You know, why another startup festival and what does your... Well, actually, we're the you first say it was also festival. a reaction to the festivals that were yeah. there. But what is wrong... Let, me, the let me start with that question. Okay. What is wrong with the festivals who all do something about startups, who all have an, you know, an, an award, an, an, a workshops, uh, accelerators, blah, 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 blah. What is wrong with that, in your opinion? Well, I think there's a distinction between a festival and a conference. Mm -hmm. um, firstly, there is uh, quite a lot of larger conferences in Europe now. Um, and there's more for founders and there's more for large companies that want to uh, connect with each other uh, and basically tap, pat themselves on the back. It's a great visibility campaign. Um, and I didn't, I saw that uh, startups were a byproduct. There were what you, Put them into a room, you say, here's my 50 if you're the next web, or you're, here's my 2000 if you're the web summit, and go, you have a meter of space, behave the same, feel the same, do the same, don't stand out. Um, and for me, for companies that are meant to be disruptive, they have that potential to actually do something and build something that actually can change people's lives. I know that's a bit of a cliche currently, mm -hmm. but uh, the potential is there. That's the potential of it. Uh, There, it just didn't fit, it didn't gel. And they aren't getting, there's a certain point in a startup's life that that, that kind of conference uh, can be useful to them if they're reaching out to a certain size of enterprise and that, that reaches there. Um, but for generally most of them, it wasn't, it doesn't, it doesn't provide value. And I wanted to offer an alternative where it's not about the ego of the guy that's standing up talking to another guy on a stage where there's four, 400 or 500 other people listening, but on their iPads and not engaging. I mean, that's boring. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not, that's not something that I would pay for. That's not something I would ask anyone to pay for. Uh, and I wanted to create um, something where you, you go to it. It's not going to cost you an arm and a leg. And you're also involving the public. So those kind of conferences, they're aimed at the tech community. Mm -hmm. They want the tech community. So what, do, what does this community need on a festival? What, what do you offer them on the Uprise? Uh, I festival? offer them that we've uh, originally, when I started the festival, um, it, well, firstly it was called a fair, and then Which I year learned did you start, 2013? Uh, actually, last year, last year. 14. Last March, 14. 14. 15, 15, yeah, okay. March. Okay. So I've had two last yeah. year, and the third one is in April, and the fourth one in Dublin is in October. Okay. Um, and we have uh, we started with offering them a stand 
which is uh, six pallets of wood, and you get half of it for 250, and the full stand for 500 euro. And that's it. We want to bring you, we allow you to do whatever you like to the stand. You can uh, rip off the poster if you want, put up your own stuff, pull away the, the frame. Um, we'll give you the opportunity to actually to stand out. If you want to do it, if you want to stand, if you want to show people that you have this product and you're really aggressive, how how really good it is, and it has, it can connect with people and it can connect with new new users, customers. We'll give you the, we'll help you do it. Not everybody takes that opportunity, but we want to see who actually steps up, because if you see it and take it, then we'll help you all the way. What we do with the last one we started, it was 77 startups. That was the first one. Then we moved on to the second festival where we had 130 startups. Of that, and that was six months later, there was 100 Dutch startups and 30 international startups. Mm -hmm. 29 different nationalities came in from outside the, the Netherlands. We spent a lot of time tweeting and a lot of time connecting to every ecosystem and every startup leader we could. Uh, because you have to go. The best way to build a network is ask people for things, mm -hmm. not wait for them to come to you. That will not, you'll never get anywhere by that. Yeah, ob ob obviously, but but I'm also getting uh, you know the impression that you know startups are a big hype. You you will not deny it. I mean we we've got all the accelerators. We've got Nelly Smith Cruz. We've got the startup village, Amsterdam startup capital of the world. Yep. Uh, startup uh, awards. Uh, the next web, uh, you know, startups, startups, startups. Why, you know, jump on that train and well, that, join the hype I, and start another festival? Um, well, first, yeah, I would say that, again, we were the first startup festival in, there was, there's no other one. Yeah, nobody calls, calls, it, the, festival. calls it the startup festival. You yeah, nobody uses the word startup. Go right. look for that right. because they don't want to target. Yeah. Okay. Um, because that means you're looking at a specific time. And we also define what a startup is. But do you, do you agree it's a, it's a, it's a hype? You know? I would say that there's a lot of attention uh, poured from the media on startups, but that has to come from a want to see it. So in the last year and a half, uh, that has definitely exploded especially in Amsterdam, but generally in Europe. And I wouldn't have been able to create this if that hadn't happened. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do it before it because we, I mean, it's taken me two and a half years to get Dutch startup jobs actually revenue positive and doing well. And now it's doing better than ever. We'll get back to that later. That's another initiative of yours. But, uh, yeah, yeah, but it all led on to uh, why I, and how I could start a festival. Because a physical event, you can... It's so much different to digital, uh, obviously, to a digital yeah. platform, but you can focus so much energy and so much time. And the change that I've seen is the larger companies, the Booking.com, the Ubers, the Facebooks, the Twitter, they're changing their perspective where it comes to these kind of the larger conferences events. Because what they want to do is they want to step in because there's such an amount of talent. Yeah. And we're but giving are, are them you really still so enthusiastic about the startup scene? Uh, these days, I'm incredibly critical we, we of have, it. We have a lot of people here uh, joining us on, uh, at this table saying, well, you know, it's becoming more of a lifestyle thing than that this, these are really the entrepreneurs of the future who, who are going to change the lives of a billion people. You know, you can hear all the marketing yeah. slogans, but what is it really about? You know, uh, it's a lifestyle thing. It's, uh, it, there is definitely a lifestyle component to it. Um, but a lot of that's bullshit. Um, I think there's only a few. There's a small percentage of people. What is the intriguing thing that makes you investing so much time and energy in getting everybody who calls themselves a startup together and organize a festival for it? Well, I, I don't want to get everyone. I only want to get, get people that actually see the opportunity to do something. Uh, and there's not that many of them. There's not that many of them in Amsterdam. Uh, there's not that many of them in the Netherlands. And to be honest, uh, I'm highly critical of the Netherlands and their efforts and the government's efforts while they support Why? me. Because what's, what's they've done everything they could. Uh, they've taken all the information that uh, London has given them, the feedback, and ignored it and did what they wanted to do. Um, give, give, make it, give us an example. What, what, are you, what, what do you mean? Um, I think... Uh, 
they've started initiatives. They started quite a lot of initiatives and poured money into creating independent entities. Mm-hmm. Where the feedback that they went, because I know, because the, the guys that they went to in, in, in uh, London, this is the Department of Economic Affairs, <coughs> before they launched Startup Delta and before they launched uh, Startup Amsterdam, said what you don't want to do is create separate entities. Support what's already there, get out of the way, make sure that uh, you can try, or you at least set the motion to um, deregulate whatever's holding startups back. But don't start creating your own initiatives. And that's not what happens. Um, and they, I've never been a fan of saying that we're going to be the next anything. I think the Netherlands has a unique perspective and a unique ability to, uh, to do a cost-benefit analysis. And here's one of the best places to actually prove product in the world. Uh, it's not, we have some definite large problems, um, but I don't think we should be comparing ourselves to anyone else. This is a unique individual uh, space. And I think we should just recognize what's unique about each of the cities and do that and to focus in on that yeah. and not uh, give money to the initiatives that are already there, which I haven't seen that happen. Uh, I've seen new initiatives pop up that have taken on the amount of the 4.2 or stuff, whatever. So, so what do you mean then, for example, Dutch, uh, or start of Amsterdam, or what, 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 what do you mean? Well, I've seen... Names. That, uh, uh, names as in the projects. They, uh, well, they've set up launchpad sessions, which are basically t- focusing on the, um, the corporate. Uh, so there's a lot of Deloitte, and we see with uh, the Startup Fest that uh, Prince Constantine and... Yeah. Uh, um, what's uh, Constantine and um, uh, the guy from Startup uh, Jim? Amsterdam, Jim Stolze. Jim Stolze? Yeah, yeah Stolze. Um, that's great, um, but that completely has nothing to, there's no startup anything involved with it. Uh, and that's your problem. And it's the same time, I think, as the next web? It is in the same week as the next web. Yeah, so and they really publicly a... said they're not anything to do with each other. Well, actually, the next web has said it um, when asked, uh, it was Patrick. And uh, there, is your, there is your primary example why can't, shit can't work here. Uh, because nobody likes working with each other. It's a, it's a collection of islands and mm-hmm. nobody wants to build bridges. Yeah. Um, and you can't, the primary issue that I've found is the Dutch can't create community. They're a collection of individuals, but they're not a community. If you look at somebody like uh, the Irish, for example. Wait, but is that different in Dublin or yes. Berlin? Yes, yeah. because there's a we and they're not yeah. an I. Yeah. Here it's I, what am, and yeah, there's a sense yeah, I, of entitlement. I agree. Yeah, I agree. But we discussed this a lot yeah. of on this but table. But the only thing is because we don't yeah. know if it's if it's. Then I always think, well, it will be the same somewhere else. But but from your experience, it is different. It is different. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you take for example, if you were going out uh, for a night, you'll a lot of my friends will go. Okay, I'm going to be here in this bar. If you want to join me, that's where I'll be. It's uh, if you're in Ireland, you'll go. Where are we going? What do we do tonight? It's yeah, thinking that's as what a group. he always does on Saturday afternoon. <laughs> he says, "Well, I'm in." And no one comes. <laughs> yeah, I'm in my bar. <laughs> I'm, I'm at Mulligans, and no one comes. Uh, no, people <laughs> should open, come. Can yeah. I open my beer? Please, because <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. have an opener. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, no, but that's in- interesting what yeah. you say. But that is outside view. Uh, but that also, what do you think? Because you've been here now for a couple of years. What is the problem? Why? Why? Don't why uh, that startups don't want to cooperate? Uh, I think primarily because there's a. If you look at America, um, there is a, well, it's it's a it's a young country. There is this need um, for helping each other do things. Um, but here, and it is in Europe, it is a European thing. It's just a bit more staunch here where you look at what you're doing and not what anyone else is doing. You're not seeing the grander picture. You don't care what the grander picture is. You just want to focus on what you're doing. And that's very short-sighted. And I know Dutch start- startups as, in, as a whole are short lifespans. They should, get, uh, they should do things quite quickly. But you don't ignore your context. And I think that that's one of the reasons that they just... I mean, so, so try, to, try to create an event in the Netherlands and bring... Uh, founders, experienced founders to it. It's like, I might as well, uh, God, I don't even know. There's no adjective, there's no metaphor I can use to say how frustrating that is to try to get them there. And that's why a lot of problems, that's why a lot of initiatives, when they try to come into the Netherlands and try to set up here, and then they fail because they think that, okay, I just, I'll launch it and it'll work. It won't work. 
Yeah. You need to have somebody visible why, behind why it. Why will your initiative work? Oh, uh, because I'm absolutely stubborn. Um, it will work, uh, <laughs> and I'm, I can be. Yeah, I can be harder than the Dutch can be. The Dutch, Irish have an ability to be uh, more straightforward, and uh, yeah, even more straightforward. Yeah, even yeah. more straightforward. Yeah, and we do like each other. That's that. Also yeah, yeah, helps. it is. It yeah. does help a lot. <laughs> yeah. um, but it also creates a sense of honesty, or at least um, uh, for you know where you stand, mm -hmm. um, and. I think that I want this to happen. And I know that the way to get something done is you keep doing it. It's not you. I mean, I've seen um, a lot of initiatives started in the last couple of years. Because I mean, I started with in the <coughs> ecosystem here, help doing whatever I could in 2011 and just keep going at it. It's not launch it and just it'll happen. Like yep. a lot of competitors for different events and stuff. They do one, two, then ah, oh, it didn't work. Eh, okay. Yep. No. No. We always take some questions from uh, Twitter as well when they come in. Uh, for example, Mark Aerts, he is asking, uh, how do you think the startup scene will look like in 2026, 10 years from now? Oof. What will be different? It's a difficult question to answer, but give us your perspective on the future. Uh, I think that uh, the, the money will have ran out for the government. Um, because that, that 4.2 uh, was it over. It always does. It <laughs> does, and we'll be back to our own game. Uh, and yeah. it, the, uh, I think that uh, it will help us to refocus on actual uh, uh, growing the, the younger companies. Um, what it'll look like, Jesus, I don't know what it'll look like in six months. The whole play, the entire ecosystem reevaluates itself every six month cycle, and you'll have different players. Look, this time last year, You didn't have half the amount of yeah. assets were in place. Now there's more co-working spaces than there is startups. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And there's more to come. Yeah, there's more to come. You have a lot of, I know personally, because now these, the larger companies are talking to us, which is a nice change, me racing and catching them, uh, about involving themselves. There's so many services like uh, the legal industry, tax industry, um, any kind of services that uh, see, oh, Well, there's something that you could do in startup and they want to test the waters there and we've been able to benefit from that and it's how I sponsor the festival um, but that means that there's an attention that either will survive or it'll die I'm not sure if there will be a blend from those two um, because they're they're quite different and yeah. they're also the the older mentality of what a, a, a startup yeah. is is well, then, uh, quite then ingrained what, what intrigues me in your story is that you're you're a little bit critical about it that uh, oh I'm very critical uh, startup community <laughs> critical about the, the the way the government is is uh, operating but still you're intrigued by the phenomena mm -hmm. uh, so why do you put all your energy in this in this world you are so highly critical about well i put it here in amsterdam in the netherlands there's a lot of like i've had my fair shares of arguments with uh, the government and uh, um, specific members of the government and of the different initiatives um, because i've been vocally critical uh, which tends not to be a uh, popular if you, you to be seen to say oh this is working it's great But that's not enjoyable. I mean, work, what works, works. <laughs> what doesn't work, fix it. Look yeah. at it, fix it. That's, that's not as easy for the Dutch to do. Yeah. Uh, and I don't care about shining a light on it. If, whatever I, if I do something and the last festival, I know that I did a lot of shit wrong uh, and I learned from it and nearly crashed the entire thing, but I'm going to do a third one. Yeah. And I'm going to do a fourth one. Uh, and it'll completely change. And it should, because I see what didn't work and I change it and see if that works for the next time. If that doesn't work, change it again. Uh, and I think that that's why I can do it here. I can be loud and I can be uh, arrogant uh, and I can build stuff and I can get resources. And I'm, I said, as I said, I'm critical of the government, but they still support me. Uh, they're still giving me money yeah. because they see that I'm doing, that I want to do, or at least my motivations are to help companies get staff get resources um give them a platform to actually yeah. build stuff well get staff that brings us maybe to the other initiative that's uh, certain we yeah. know you're from yeah the, the yeah. dutch startup jobs mm. um so what, why did you start that hmm. uh what happened with this one because it was fun it was funny because um i started into this startup eco i say a community it wasn't an ecosystem yet so it was just a collection of people kind of saying well what we could do in 2011 <laughs> 
and I did a startup weekend. And from their startup weekend, the first one, it was like Don Ritson and uh, yeah. whoever, they, they just launched Rockstart at that Excellent. time. Um, yeah. And the entire community was involved with Ren was, it, was there, Matthias, uh, uh, Matthias from uh, Moby Picture. Vanaba. And, yeah, yeah. Vanaba, yeah. They, they're all there. And it's not like that now, but they were all there. Uh, and a group of that uh, came together afterwards and said, well, what does the ecosystem, what, does, what are we missing? And there was like ideas were pumped out for two days and unsurprisingly, nothing came of it. So they decided to do all this and then everyone dropped out after it because it was too much work and blah, blah, blah. And one of the things was there was no job site for startups. So I said, okay, look, all this takes is set up a, um, a simple blog. So I set up a simple blog and within the first day, just posting out stuff and saying, uh, putting jobs up there on, a, on a, just a base, base level, yeah. 1500 uniques in the first day. And then you just keep, kept growing because there was nothing, there was nothing else. And we were there to help young companies. It's the same philosophy that I bring through to the festival. It's just a physical manifestation of it. And it kept growing and it kept, it took me two years to build a network because you don't just, again, launch it. Mm -hmm. You have to actually uh, go tell people it exists, tell them again it exists, and again, and again, and again, and again. And if you can make money from startups, you can make money from anybody, because these, this group does not want to spend a penny. Oh. But if they see the value of it, you've got something. Yeah. So what is your business model? I mean, I, I, I'm seeing a site with you know, jobs being available. Yeah, uh, it's quite a lot, actually. Model? They, uh, we charge for jobs. So we've got a resume uh, section of uh, about over 1,800 resumes for people who want to get into startups. And that one startup will pay for them um, because uh, it's easier for the other side. There's two parts to it. When you put up a job, you pay for a job. I think it's uh, for a full-time job, it is 100, no, 90 euro. Um, and then we've started new models of uh, subscription over like six months, you have five jobs and you get two, uh, two subscri two. Uh, so a company features. looking for, uh, for people. The, the, so so yeah. they, put, they put up the, the, the yeah. job. I need a front end developer or I need a... Yeah, yeah, a lot of front end developers, but they, it's changed in the last, there's less now over the... Uh, <coughs> the Data uh, developer, traffic acquisition manager, yeah, there's, there's customer success, success manager. manager. Hey, yeah. we didn't have that a couple of years ago. <laughs> Does it say customer success manager intern? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, there's quite a lot of the interns in there as well. I mean, that, at one point that was more than the full-time jobs, and it's still quite heavy, uh, and it, they're underappreciated. And I've taken. It's actually not an intern. No. Oh well, I've no idea anymore. Ah. Luckily, I, f I just focus on uh, Uprise, um, but uh, that's running really well. But the reason for that is because, yeah, we built the channels, we make sure that we follow the right people, we keep building that week on week on week on week, uh, and uh, we're returning eight to 10 applications per job on average. And they're not bullshit applications either. They're not like, uh, say, in from Eastern Europe or wherever. There's a lot from the, the, the Netherlands. I do think that there should be a little bit more openness towards uh, doing remote or at least how that works. Uh, and, not a, and one of the big changes that I made a year ago was that uh, we started charging for internships, which at the time, a year and a half ago, uh, nobody liked that uh, because you do not charge for interns. Um, but I made them do it. Uh, we, are, we on average were going 60, uh, about a month, 60 jobs a month. Um, and then that dropped to 30 the minute I did that. And then I just had to keep plowing through and going, no, nope, you pay for putting up internships because it's the lifeblood of the startup uh, community are interns. Mm -hmm. Look at Rockstart. It's in, it is a, a complete <laughs> ecosystem of interns and then they evolve and they dissem disseminate it to other companies. Yeah. So yeah. it's a lifeblood. You've got to appreciate that and you've got to say that uh, it actually works when they are working in another company and either they get the bug or they don't. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, the, the, um, um, uh, you, you said well, the, the origin of this was, uh, for example, uh, a meeting uh, with a couple, yeah. of, a couple of people and that, so that group isn't uh, around uh, anymore. Is that an ex another example of use that we're not good at building or maintaining uh, communities? I think it was an example. There was a lot of really interested people. And if you, if you know, there's a lot happens everywhere that 
a lot of people would come to the first meeting just to see what's about and not really interested in continuing the participation, but just want to test it. There's just quite a few of that. Um, and that they came in, the problem was, and these are all guys are like, uh, I think uh, Don Kinsel as well, he was part of that as the one day. Uh, yeah, he's yeah. a rock star as well, eh? Yeah, yeah. no, yeah. he's uh, Holland Fintech now. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, Don. There's another Don uh, in, uh, uh, in Rockside as well, isn't there? Oh, that, uh, Don Ritsen. Ritsen and Ginsel. Yeah, 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 sure, yeah. They should change their names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, they were part, he was, well, he was part of that. Uh, and it just, no leadership. I kind of, I, when I was part of it, I was pretty vocal that they weren't giving directives of what we wanted to do because everyone was wanting to point one way. So nobody had a directed vision. So everyone just dropped off and going, yeah, yeah I'm not interested. Yeah. yeah. Hey, um, uh, you, you have your uh, festival, and maybe uh, twice a year the festival in, in the Netherlands. Or more, you never know. More, yeah. Um, but okay, then you have your festival. But if you're if if you're about building communities and bringing people together, uh, what what happens between the, the between the festivals? There's well, it's working between the festivals. Festival takes about six months preparation. Yeah, yeah, for you, but bring it, bring it. I mean, for for uh, you've got this community of what is it? For example, four thousand people that came. Yeah. Uh, came last so that's an ideal group to. With a, with a lot of potential, uh, uh, maybe for for the jobs, or maybe for knowledge, or maybe for uh, helping each other out. Yeah. So of course I understand that you're that's a lot of work to organize a festival. But when you don't do something in between, you don't use the power of the uh, the potential of the community. Yeah, yeah, you will lose that uh, to an extent. Uh, I'm fine with that. <laughs> I uh, nothing is forever. I won't engage people for for like between uh, between the mire of uh, of uh, the festival because it's a it's an event. So you've got a single focus. If you don't have an event, you're kind of going well. You can get involved in this, but it shouldn't. It should be a celebration, or it should be uh, going learning stuff, uh, connecting with people, and bring that forward yourself. We're big. I'm a big fan of uh, not bringing technology to the festival. I won't have an app for the festival. I decide how you how do you tell people what's going on in workshop area B because there's a whiteboard outside it that the volunteers write. Hey, we're having this in 20 minutes, yeah. uh, and it's the same thing with our pitch competition. There's no judges. I won't do judges. Yeah. Uh, not well, not media judges. The way that we work it is that uh, you, we have a pitch battle. There's two startups. One this side, one this side, one is a green piece of paper, one is a red piece of paper. You've got a moderator and the audience has a piece of gray, gray red, uh, red paper, has a piece of green paper, and they, they pick the winner. Now we had Microsoft, who's edict for this, they, wanted, they sponsored it and said, we just want to talk to startups. That's it. No underlying, we want to sell this. No, we just want to talk to as many startups as we can. Yep. Uh, and they had himself and John Staunton, who was uh, moderating it, I picked the winner at the beginning. They went, yeah, that, that guy's got to win. And I was like, okay, great. Out in the first round, yeah. the audience kicked him out, going, no, not interested in it. Yeah. What won was a, uh, an algorithm for finding uh, cheaper flights. Uh, hello trips. Yeah, we've had them here. Yeah. yeah. Hello. They're, uh, they're really good. And he yeah. was really good at being able to connect with the audience. And a lot of the time, the, the, uh, the startups don't know how to do that. They'll connect yeah. with investors. They'll connect with uh, tech talent. Yeah. But actually taking, connecting with people who are going to use your product, that's yeah. a, a different ballgame completely. Okay, hey, one uh, final question yeah, for me. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're highly critical about the startup scene, and uh, maybe rightly so. Uh, a very good analysis, I think. Um, but still, you're working full-time in this scene. Yeah. But you have a past as a UX designer. I do. Creating beautiful things, beautiful yes. interfaces. Don't you ever long for, you know... No, no, Going because back to your your own skills. Uh, well, the, yeah. the skills of UX designers solving problems. So I'm yeah. always really pissed off. There's not more UX designers actually founding companies. Like mm -hmm. in human, you uh, you had uh, Ren yeah. and you had yeah. uh, Paul, yeah. Yeah. and Ren's gone over to uh, uh -huh. Honor, uh, and he's a great UX designer uh, or visual designer, whichever day he's on. But. Uh, it, it's the mentality of solving problems and get, making sure that your problem is connecting with the person that it's supposed to solve for. Uh, and I think for doing a fast, it applies to anything. So I can do it if I was like trying to design a sink or I'm going to do the workflow for the, how people are supposed to walk through the festival. 
doing the signage for the beginning of, of, the, fe of the festival or I'm doing for Dutch Startup Jobs because uh, I have to do this or we're redesigning how, how people engage with the, the platform and building it and testing it. It's just the mentality. I mean, you had, uh, you had Steve Jobs yeah. who was so like a typographer. Doing every, you're doing everything you do the same way. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Solving problems. It's just solving okay. problems in different degrees. Okay, mm. thanks a lot. Uh, it's in April. Um, where? 21st in where? Amsterdam. Where, where in Amsterdam? In the box. It's in out box. near Sloterdijk. Yeah, we just okay. changed the uh, location. It's new. It used yeah. to be the sand. Oh, uh, all right. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, interesting. Yeah. So people can uh, go to uprisefestival.co and find all the uh, information. Yes, they can. Um, uh, thanks a lot. Um, Oké, okay, jullie bedankt uh, voor het kijken. Ik geloof dat de uitzending nog door is gaan opsteken. Want niet. We hadden een beetje de vraag of het wel live zou kunnen. Maar ik heb het gevoel van wel. Ja, dat weet je nooit. Dat weet je nooit zeker. Er zijn in ieder geval ook wel. Wellicht zijn er wat willekeurige vragen die gewoon ja. langskomen. Dat we er even vragen zonder dat mensen kijken. Dat kan natuurlijk ook. Um, en anders kun je de uitzending, zoals je weet, uh, on demand bekijken. Zoals alle andere uitzendingen. Uh, we gaan hier live zo direct uh, verder. Um, maar uh, we doen dat niet voordat we bedankt hebben. 2ML, het bedrijf dat zorgt voor de hosting van Fast Moving Targets. Bier Co, dat zorgt voor de bieren uh, hier uh, uh, op tafel. En uh, tot slot, uh, natuurlijk Streamzilla uit uh, Groningen. Hiervoor zorgt dat je deze uitzendingen iedere keer live kan kijken. En als het nu niet werkt, dan lag het overigens niet aan Streamzilla. Dan moet ik er eventjes bij zeggen. Dan lag daar de verbinding hier in Amsterdam. Dankjewel. Dag.